Now that you know what an ogive is, or a cumulative frequency curve, let's go through an example. In this example, it says, the table represents the percentage of monthly income that 40 people spend on petrol and car expenses. So in this first class interval, there are eight people who spend between 12 and 18% of their income on their car expenses and petrol. 20 spend between 18 and 24% and on and on. Okay, so if we want to now draw a cumulative frequency curve or an ogive, instead of frequency, I need to add a column to my table, which I've already done, called cumulative frequency. But normally the question would just be given to you like this, and you'd have to actually add this table. Okay, so we're going to sum all of the consecutive frequencies or accumulate them. So in this first interval, we've only gone through eight values, so my cumulative frequency is eight. Then in the next interval, I've gone through eight plus 20, which is 28 values. Summing all three, or I can sum diagonally, like uh, Mr. Wu said in his video. So we get 28 plus 12, which is 40. I have 48 and I have 50. Let's just double check by adding these together because the n value, my number of values, should add up to whatever my final cumulative frequency is here at the bottom. So 8, 28, 40, 48, 50. Okay. So that checks out. All right. Now we need to draw this on our cumulative frequency curve. So I need to choose a suitable um, scale for my axes. So I can see that I'm going from 12 to 42. So I could start my x-axis at 12, but I'm actually going to start at zero because I want to show you something. So I have a zero here. Um, let's go by two. So two, four, six, eight, 10, two, four, six, eight, 20, 30, two, four, six, eight, 40. So 42 will be there. Okay. I've already got percentage labeled, so I'm not gonna worry about my x-axis label. I've got cumulative frequency on my y-axis. And again, I need to choose a suitable scale. So I'm going up to 50 at the top. So I think I'm gonna choose the same scale. Um, 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay, so hopefully I have done that correctly. All right. So now, like Mr. Wu said, we need to graph the frequency, the cumulative frequency, with the end point of the interval, because that's the amount that's accumulated, right? So eight people have accumulated by the time we get to 18. So my first coordinate is at 18 and 8. So 18 and 8 is there. All right. My next one is at 24 and 28, so 24 and 28 is there, yep, 30 and 40, 30 and 40, and 36, 48, 6, 48, That's 48, and that's 36, okay? And then my last one is at 42, and my cumulative frequency is 50. So 42, use my ruler, and 50. Okay. Now, where do I start this graph? I can see that I have a curve that I'm going to draw, but where do I start the graph? I start the graph at my first interval, or my first boundary, which is 12 and 0. Okay, so again, I could have started my graph at 12, meaning 12 would be here, and then I would start, it would look like it's from the origin, but it's actually from 12. Okay, now in Mr. Wu's video, he drew straight lines between these points, but our textbook actually wants a smooth curve. They advise a smooth curve. So we're going to draw, just freehand, connect the dots. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but we're going to draw a curve between those dots. Okay, so there's our ogive. Now, we're going to use this cumulative frequency curve. Remember he said that it's useful for estimating the mean, 
not the mean, sorry, the median and the quartiles. So measures of position now. You can also use it to measure percentiles, all right? And that's what we're going to do in exercise C here. Okay, so the quartiles, now he talked about the median in his example, but our book actually does it a slightly different way. So I'm going to do it the way the book does it. Let's do the median first, and I'll use a different color. Okay, so let's do the median first. The median is halfway through the data. So if I have 50 data values, then halfway between my n values, or halfway between those 50 values, is at 25. So I'm going to use my ruler to draw a dashed line at 25. So halfway between 20 and 30 is 25. I'm going to draw a dashed line. And then I'm going to use my ruler to read down and figure out what this point is. Okay, so 20, 22, this is roughly 23 is the median. Okay, so that's Q2 or the median. Right, and we'll summarize these in a second. Okay, let me take a different color and do the other two quartiles. Um, quartile 1, we know is the 25th percentile, or a quarter of the way through the data, so I'm going to say 1 over 4 n, 1 over 4 times 50 is 12,5. So my first quartile is going to be between the 12th and the 13th number. So looking here, I have... Um, 12, 14, so I'm going to be a little bit closer to 12. Use my other color. Okay, my markers are very fat, but you would use a pencil. Okay, so quartile 1 is roughly 12, 14, 16, 18. Call it 19. Let's say... Q1 equals 19, okay? And then the third quartile is three quarters of the way through the data, or the 75th percentile. So I'm going to, uh, let's write that here, multiply my 50 values times 3 over 4. So 3 over 4 times 50 gives me 37 comma 5. So my third quartile is between the 37th and the 38th value. So we're 32, 34, 36, 37, almost to 38. And estimating down I see I'm at 22, 24, 26, 28, so let's call it 29. So Q3 is round about 29. Okay, so let's summarize these on the side. We're going to say, therefore, Q1 is approximately equal to 19. I can put my squiggly there. Q2, or you could use big M for the median is approximately equal to 23, and Q3 is approximately equal to 29. Okay, um, right. In terms of marking, we generally give you a window because you're estimating based on your own curve. So we're gonna mark anything correct, say for this median. Let's say we'd give you um, some wiggle room between 22 and 24, or even more. Okay, so don't stress if your answer isn't exactly the same as mine or isn't exactly the same as in the back of the book. You do get a little bit of wiggle room there. Okay, the last question says, 40% of people spend less than a certain percentage on their income. 
what is this percentage? So this is confusing because we have percent of people, but we also have percentage of income down here. Let's write that percentage of income. Okay. But remember, this cumulative frequency represents number of people. So to figure out where 40% of people are, I need to take 40%, so I have 0, 0,4 for 40%, and multiply that by my n values. So multiplying 0, 0,4 times 50, or 2 fifths of 50 gives me 20. So all I need to do is figure out where is the 20th person located. Let's do another color here. So the 20th person is here. And I'm right on the line there, so that makes it a bit easier. So this is somewhere between 20 and 22. So let's estimate it at 21 or maybe 21 and a half. Okay, so the percentage is 21, let's say, comma, 5 percent. So what that means is that 40 percent of people spend less than 21.5 percent of their income on their cars. Okay. Our next example is a little bit more challenging, and it, um, it speaks to one of my biggest fears, which I don't know if you've ever been on an airplane and you wonder how close behind me is the next plane. You know, are we going to collide on the runway or something like that? Maybe that's just me. But anyway, so in this example, it shows the times between different planes landing at an airport and our tables in terms of seconds. Right. So they give us the ogive this, this time and we need to complete the table. So I've already done a little bit for you. Oh, we weren't supposed to see that. All right. So let's see how we fill in this table. Right, they've already given us the coordinate at 100 is 5, and I can see that at 100, 5 planes have landed. I then go to 140, so reading from the graph. At 140, I'm at 19 planes, okay. 180, I'm at 29 planes, and if you're not sure why I'm using this um, upper boundary, then you need to watch Mr. Wu's video again. Okay. At 220, I'm at 38, and you can see how I got the rest. Okay, so there are 47 total planes, which means that my N, or whatever my frequency adds up to, needs to add up to 47. So let's double check and make sure that's the case. Okay. Filling in this table, I don't need the graph for this. So we know that in the first interval, the frequency and the cumulative frequency are the same. In the next one, I need to figure out what did I add to 5 to get 19. I added 14. What did I add to 19 to get 29? 10. This is 9. This is 7. And 2. Let's double check. 19, 29, 38. Plus 7 is 45, plus 2 is 47, so that looks right to me. Okay, so we've done letter A, completing the table. Now estimating the median. We're going to estimate the median again by taking half of the data values. So 1 half times n. In this case, n is 47. 47 planes have landed, so half of 47, which is... 23,5. So that means that my median lies between the 23rd and the 24th positions. So you're going to use a better marker than this. You're going to use a pencil. But let's do this. So one, two, three, and a half. Draw your line there, so that's 23 and a half. And drawing down from the curve, I can see that I'm roughly, let's see, I think we're counting by fours here. 144, 148, 152, 
156, let's call it 157. Okay, so let's say our median is approximately equal to, so therefore median is approximately equal to, what did I say, 157? 157 seconds. Okay, so let's put it there. Therefore median is approximately equal to 157 seconds. How many planes had a time between them of 220 seconds or more? So I look at where I have seconds. Okay, use a different color. I look at where I have seconds. And now I'm reading number of planes. So my, my answer is going to be along the y-axis. So 220 planes. Now I want more than 220 seconds or more. Okay, so I'm looking at any value that's above 220. So I'm looking at this portion of the curve to answer the question. Because those are the ones that had a time between 220 or more seconds. Right. So reading across on our graph, 220, and this is 38. So between 38 and 45 is seven planes. Okay, so seven planes had a time of 220 seconds or more. 